Welcome to the how-to video for creating a wellbore model in Builder with FlexWell. FlexWell is CMG's wellbore modeling tool that allows for accurate modeling of flow, heat and pressure losses, and different wellbore configurations. Before I go into Builder to actually show the steps of creating a FlexWell, I'll first talk briefly about the configuration that I would like to replicate with the wellbore modeling tool. So as you can see on this slide, my goal is to design an injector wellbore for use in a SAG-D simulation. SAG-D, or steam-assisted gravity drainage, is a thermal process that is commonly used in the Albertan oil sands to produce high viscosity bitumen. The process itself consists of a circulation phase and then the main SAG-D phase. So the goal of the circulation phase is to circulate steam in the wellbore as a means to heat up the cold bitumen around the wellbore and also to establish communication between the injector and producer well. Here in this diagram, steam is being injected through the long tubing and then produced back up through the casing. Typically, this stage can last up to three months before moving into the SAG-D stage. And in the SAG-D stage, the steam is being injected both through the long tubing and through the annulus. So here, the annulus is now an injector as opposed to being a producer during the circulation stage. Okay, so this is the configuration I will be modeling in Builder with the FlexWell option. And to show how to do this, I'll go into my Builder file that's already been pre-created. And now to set up FlexWell, I'll click on the Wells and Recurrence section in the tree view. And as you can see, all my wells have already been defined. And one very important thing to ensure is that if you have multiple wells, connect it to the same flex well, so if you have multiple tubing wells, for example, all of them need to be defined in the exact same location. If they are defined in different locations, stars will return an error when the simulation is run. For this reason, I have ensured that my casing and long tubing are all defined in the exact same location. All right, so to define a new flex well, under the wells and recurrence section, there's an option called flex wells. So I'll double click on this option. Here, by clicking on this new FlexWell option, all the FlexWell options on the right side are enabled. So here at the top, you can change the name of your FlexWell, you can change the definition date, or if you want to allow solid deposition inside the FlexWell, that can also be activated at the top as well. The first thing I'm going to do is to actually change the name of the FlexWell. And to do this, I'll click on this edit option, and change the name to injector and then click OK. As you can see on the side, we first need to define the annulus or casing well. To pick the correct annulus well, beside the well section, I'm going to click on this drop down and select the producer well inch underscore annulus underscore circulation. So this is actually a producer well because during the circulation stage, my annulus is a producer. Once selected, the default values all get filled in, so you can see the default casing properties for heat capacity, for heat conductivity, for relative roughness, all the default values are filled in. You can choose to overwrite these values if you have data, or you can just leave them to be the default values. Here in the casing diameter section, the diameter is set to a constant value of 0.3. So the inner diameter of the flex well and the outer diameter are both set to 0.3. You can choose to leave this as a constant value or change the diameter type to be variable. And the reason you would choose variable is if your wall size actually changes along the length of your casing. In this case, however, I'll leave it selected at the default constant option and change the inner diameter to be 0.224 meters, and then I'll change the outer diameter to 0.225 meters. If I wanted to open a shut in a specific perforation along my annulus, I can easily do that here. 
So I can just select whichever perforation I wanted to shut in and then just change the status. So all those options are available all in one place. Now that my annulus well has been defined, I can define my long tubing. And to do this, there's an option on the side of the window to add tubing. So when I click on it, I now have to define a different well to be the tubing string. Again, you want to make sure that the tubing wells are completed in the same location as the annulus wells to ensure that there are no errors when the simulation is run. Here I can select my long tubing by clicking on the drop down and selecting the injector well inch underscore tubing underscore long. Again, just like with the annulus, the default tubing properties and the default inner and outer diameter are automatically filled out. And again, just like the annulus, you can change the tubing diameter to be a constant value or set it to be variable. And if you choose variable, you can specify how the diameter of the tubing actually changes along the length of the well. Also, for tubing, you can actually specify packers at different locations of the well by just checking off the perforations where you might have a packer in place. I'm just going to uncheck these options. I'll change it back to the constant diameter and just change the diameter from what it is right now to 0.076 for the inner diameter and then 0.08 for the outer diameter. So with that, my long tubing has been defined. If you wanted to define a concentric tubing, you also have the option to do so by clicking on this add concentric tubing option. So then you will have a tubing defined inside of this long tubing. Alternatively, if you would like to define a separate tubing string, you can go back to the annulus well. First, I can click yes to apply these changes. So once I go back to the annulus well, I can choose to add another tubing by clicking on this add tubing option. Now a separate tubing string gets defined. And if I wanted to attach a short tubing or another long tubing, I can easily do so by clicking on this drop down and then selecting the corresponding well. However, in this case, I only have one tubing string defined, so I can delete this new tubing that got added by just right-clicking here on the side and selecting Delete Tubing. Now that I've defined everything, I'm going to click Apply. And like I said, I've defined my flex well configuration for the steam circulation phase. And as I mentioned earlier, this phase will last about three months. And after that, we will switch to the SAG-D phase, where the wellbore configuration showed injection occurring through both the annulus and the long tubing. This can easily be modeled by clicking on the Flexwell Events window on the top left corner. And here in this window, you can actually open your wells, shut in your wells, or even replace wells that are attached to the Flexwell. At the very top, I have my injector well selected. And the only event defined is on the date 2008-01-01. Since my circulation phase lasts for three months, I want to replace my annulus well from a producer to an injector on 2008-04-01. To do this, I'll click on the option here on the side to add a new row or add a new date. I'll click on the button besides the date and then change the date to 2008-04-01 and click OK. So on this date, 2008-0401, the first thing I need to do is shut in my circulation annual as well. So I'll find the row 2008 and then for the column injector annual circulation, I'm going to click on the drop down and select shut in. Now on this date, the annual circulation well is shut in. And the next thing I have to do is to replace the circulation annual as well to my SAG-D annulus well. So this well has already been defined in the same location, but it actually becomes active on 2008-04-01. So to replace the well, I can click for the flex well event type column on 2008-04-01. I can click on the drop down and select replace. And then for the column injector annulus circulation, for the new row that gets added in, I'll select injector annulus sag D. And now another row is added in. Effectively what I've done is on the day 2008-0401 the circulation annulus well is shut in and it's replaced with the sag D annulus well 
And on the day 2008-0401, both the SAG-D annulus well and my long tubing are both open and they're both going to be injecting the steam. Now, this configuration for SAG-D and circulation matches what I had shown earlier and what I was trying to create with this flex well option. So now that everything's been defined correctly, I'm going to click Apply and OK. So that's how you define a flex well through Builder. Thank you for watching.